Okay, uh, so we've done two modules, um, mostly sort of introductory ones. Our, our focus, as I said today, in this lab is on quantitative uh, metabolomics. Uh, here's the standard set of slides about um, the Creative Commons licensing. And as I said, this is the lab uh, that we're gonna be doing. And we, we have a total of two hours allocated. Um, for the lab. So we're starting at uh, three and ending at five in Montreal, and we're starting at one and ending at, at three here in Edmonton. Now for the lab, I'm gonna give you guys roughly, I don't know, about a 35, 40 minute introduction to the lab. This is where I think if you can, please download the slides so you have them internally on your computer because you're gonna to have to look at things. You might have to write some notes down because you have to go to certain websites the lab that I'm showing you, the slides partly take you through what you're supposed to do. So, you know, if you're stuck, you should be able to find a slide that says click here. Um, and so that should work. Talk to your neighbor. They might be doing exactly the same thing, um, or they might not. It depends on the groupings here. Um, but this is intended to be interactive. So it's going to be open, uh, open mic for the first 35, 40 minutes. And then we're going to close the mics in Edmonton and in Montreal, so that each group can work with their TAs and go through the different exercises. You're going to have roughly an hour and a half um, to finish up, uh, and each of you are going to do three different exercises for three different platforms. I'll explain this in a bit more detail. So we're trying to do quantitative um, metabolomics. You're going to be processing experimental, real experimental data from real samples uh, that were collected um, and harvested, if you want, for this particular project. So you're going to do NMR, you're going to do GCMS, and you're going to do LCMS. For NMR, you're going to use the software that I just introduced called Magnet. For GCMS, we're going to introduce the software called GC AutoFit. And for the LCMS, we're going to use LC AutoFit. So three platforms, three software types. Now, because these things are pretty compute intensive, it's not as if we can get everyone, there's 43 of you, I think, in in Montreal and Edmonton to take all these queries all at once. So that's just not possible with today's computer technology. So we're dividing you into several groups. And so it's kind of a round robin. So three groups, three platforms. That means that, that roughly gets 13 to 14 users at a time, which is what these servers can tolerate. So there's gonna be two files or two experiments uh, that you're gonna get for the GCMS and the LCMS and you guys are gonna work with one file for NMR. So it means that uh, NMR partly takes a little longer, GCMS should be fast. I don't know how long the LCMS will take, but uh, hopefully it's reasonably fast. Now, the idea is you work on your platform. So if you're assigned to the NMR platform, you're gonna work on that file for 30 minutes. It might take 15 minutes for it to get a result. And then for the last 15 minutes, you can play around with the the spectrum, but you're also supposed to upload your data uh, to a certain server so that we can pool everyone's results. So there are slides, sheets, uh, or the CBW GitHub page where you'll see your name and which technology platform and which software tool you're supposed to be using. So if you're with NMR, you do Magnet. If you're with GCMS, you do GC AutoFit. If you're assigned to LCMS, you use LC AutoFit. Don't mix LCMS data with NMR or Magnet, okay? So you're gonna have your files. The files will have your name associated with them. Uh, you're gonna download those onto your computer, and then you're gonna start your designated web server. Uh, and that means when you start it, you're gonna have to upload your files so the web server can process it. Now you're processing, sometimes it's interactive, most of it's gonna be automatic. So you just click and kind of wait and then the answer appears. And it's once the answer appears, that's when you can kind of explore and check and do things. Um, then you download the files onto your computer. Those are all gonna be CSV files or Excel files, comma separated value files. So you can take a look at them uh, and you can save them. Some of you know a little bit about HMDB or other resources. You can compare the values you got with what's, what's known. And, and then you're gonna be uploading your CSV files to the CBW Dropbox page, those are all gonna be consolidated because what we're doing is it's sort of crowdsourcing science. Everyone's running these things. They're doing it for many different samples. 
um, and for you know three different experiments with three different subject groups. And then tomorrow you're going to be able to use MetaboAnalyst to analyze those data sets. And you're going to see you know, what metabolomics reveals, what's you know, different about these, what's unique. Maybe find some biomarkers, maybe discover something that we haven't discovered. So for the GCMS files, there's 84 urine samples uh, from patients. And we were looking at a study with sleep apnea. So some people had sleep apnea, some didn't. Evidently, uh, there is a difference in, in terms of their metabolomes. And this was analyzed on an instrument up on the eighth floor here, uh, which is an Agilent 7890 GCMS. And it, I think, measures about 70, 75 metabolites. I don't know if you guys remember exactly. The NMR files, there's going to be 42 serum samples. And this is non-human, so we're looking at sheep. And we're looking at pregnant sheep and non-pregnant sheep. And the idea here was to see if we can find a marker that can distinguish between pregnant and non-pregnant sheep in the early stages of pregnancy. So if you look at sheep, you can't tell which ones are pregnant, um, especially at sort of 50 days. If you did a simple blood test, then you could. And that makes a difference for sheep farmers because they have to change the feeding rations and, and other things for pregnant sheep. So this is part of a, a, develop with a study to develop a, a biomarker for sheep pregnancy. Second and third one is 84 serum samples. So these are patients with early stage lung cancer and then controls. So lung cancer, which is normally quite fatal and is usually not discovered until stage three or four, um, can be cured quite routinely if you identify it at stage one. Unfortunately, we don't have any markers to do that. So this is a study to identify markers for early stage lung cancer. And as you guys will see, I think, I hope, well, when you do your study tomorrow, you will find markers for early stage lung cancer detection. So this was done with LCMS. It was done with a smaller study, just to make it simpler for you guys. Um, it measures about 145 metabolites uh, using LCMS, using a QTRAP 4000. Again, all these instruments are either up on the eighth floor or the 700 megahertz is just uh, down the hall in the, in the third floor. So uh, we've talked about magnet, I've given you a little bit of an introduction of it. This is the same text, but the access that you can have is either teaching one dot magnet or teaching two dot magnet. That's assigned to you. So if you've written it down or if it's in your slides, make sure you go to that. Same thing with GC Autofit, explained it before already. Again, two servers, make sure you know which one. It's either the GC Autofit 1 or GC Autofit 2. And those are the URLs that you go to, depending on what you've been assigned to based on the slides I've just shown you. LC Autofit, again, we've done a quick re review about what it's like, what you do. You go to the LC Autofit wishartlab.com. So everyone can do this one. It's the same, same server, same. It's not two, it's just the one. We've explained uh, the, the general overview as well for NMR. Your focus for the lab is from the processing the NMR spectra to get the list. All the other stuff has been done for you guys already. Obviously, we can't have a lab with everyone working in the lab. Um, so this has been done for you. So if you're doing NMR, um, you can go to this website. Again, the link should be on, uh, I think, the Slack channel or GitHub or both. Um, and you're going to see your name. So uh, yeah, you're at the top. Um, and so that's your file. Um, and that's the one that you're going to download. Um, and Alyssa and Amber, I think it's all alphabetical. So you can you know, find your name, download your file if you're doing NMR first. If you're not doing NMR first, don't download the NMR file. So let's say you're doing NMR, then you're going to go to teaching1.magnet or teaching2.magnet. And these are just pictures of that. So this is the instruction. Now, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. You guys can download this, but this is what you'll see. You'll see, you know, an about menu. Uh, it'll explain things and, you know, you can look at it or you can race through it depending on whether you're um, into that sort of thing. Um, so once you've started, then you're going to be able to uh, submit your uh, spectra. So it says, welcome to Magmit. Thank you for using it. We're so pleased. And then it goes on to say, upload how to submit your files. 
So as you scroll down, it'll explain this and you'll see this instructions to analyze. It does have some examples. There's no need for you guys to run example files. You have real files to work with. You've hopefully downloaded them. So uh, you're going to select your zip file. You're going to enter a submission name. Uh, you're going to select none for the pre-processed option. Because we're analyzing serum, um, these are sheep serum that you have. Uh, that's your biofluid. And we're using a 700 megahertz NMR instrument. So the data we're collected on is 700 megahertz. In NMR, you can collect at 500, 600, 700, 800, and so on. But you were collecting on 700, or the data for you is at 700. So don't choose 600, don't choose 800. Um, and make sure you choose serum because that's what you're analyzing. So once you've uploaded your data, then the computer starts churning and it's doing that spectral deconvolution we talked about. So it's going through each peak and there's hundreds of peaks in these spectra and it's picking out the peaks, matching to things in the library, trying and guessing and checking like a human would, but it's doing it automatically. So after probably about eight or 10 minutes for you guys, it'll produce an answer. So during those eight or 10 minutes, you can have a cookie, some coffee, walk around, chat with some friends. Um, but eventually you're gonna get a result would look like this. And this will be a spectrum where it's been fitted. Um, and you can view those spectra in more detail. Um, you can click on the spectrum, you can download the spectrum. Uh, it's giving you a list of you know, what's been going on, what's been processed, whether it's completed or whether it's being processed. So this one was completed, this one is still being processed. Um, you're only hopefully submitting one file, so you should just see one, I think, listed. Unless if everyone's submitting at the same time, I guess it will list all of them. I can't remember. So if 12 of you have submitted, you're going to see 12 files. Make sure you know which one is yours and you don't steal someone else's. Yes? Some additional uh, information also in this that the audience, like it's about chemical preference, NMR frequency select biofluid pre-processed is optional. Did it? Did you have to submit your chemical shift reference? I think it should know the chemical shift reference. So that's that should all be there. Is it concentration and speed? It does ask for uh, the ESS for speed. So, so just the default options. Um, so it should chose should have chosen DSS. Uh, so you should just take those defaults. Uh, so maybe we'll put a six and seven as choose, keep your defaults for that. Um, so once you're completed, you can click on that. It'll pop up your spectrum. You can explore your spectrum and there's a control panel. So there's a big down arrow and uh, that'll expand it to the control panel, which allows you to, to view things. This is a tool called J Spectra View. It was a Java spec, J, JavaScript tool that was developed in the lab that allows you to view um, spectra. It allows you to view NMR spectra, GCMS spectra, LCMS spectra um, interactively on the web. That's been a lot of work uh, because most resources require computers, full-time CPUs to do this. So this is a, a lot of work uh, to get this interactive. You can expand and like, blow up your spectrum. You can zoom in, you can drag across the spectrum. Uh, you can see how things are fitting or in some cases not fitting. Uh, um, so this interactive zoom is available essentially for all the spectral views. So we've zoomed in here. You can see where things are closer. You can uh, show your compound file. Uh, you can adjust your fit. You can lock your view. There's a bunch of options that are there. So again, once it's done, you should spend a few minutes just exploring things. You can mouse over with your mouse or trackpad and click on peaks. Um, those will also identify things for you. Um, you can search. So this thing will have identified about 55 compounds and it will determine the concentration for all of these compounds in these sheep serum samples. You can type in a name. Here we've typed in valine. Um, there it is listed. Um, you can click and highlight that. And when you clicked on the name of the compound in the screen below, it highlights the valine chemical shifts in the spectrum above. Uh, and those are the dark blue peaks. So you can see how well it fit or isn't fitting. Most of the time it should fit very, very well. And so this has done this spectral deconvolution. Um, you can see some cases where peaks are, you know, there's 
peaks directly overlapping or not overlapping. Um, once you've played around, you can then download things. So you can download the, the magnet file, you can download the spectral database in a CSV file. And so the CSV file will be a list with the HMDB identifiers, the name of the compound, the concentration. You can get the magnet data as a JSON file. You can drag and drop that JSON file back into uh, the standalone viewer to see things again. Um, so this allows you to revisit your data. So that's the NMR one. So this is what the NMR group should be doing. At the same time, there's going to be a GCMS group. So we talked about how GCMS is done and how things are processed. And um, so you're focusing on this last part, process GCMS chromatogram, analyze where your GC ought to fit, get your list. The other stuff was done for you um, to collect, in this case, urine samples. So if you're in the GCMS group for part one, your name is here. Um, you can download your GCMS file. And this is the link. You don't have to type in all 18,000 characters. That link is uh, on GitHub or Slack. Is that correct? On GitHub. So each of these long, ridiculously long links, they should work on your slides if you've downloaded them. Okay. Um, just click the get home in the chat. If you don't remember the URL, it's there. Just click on that and scroll to the bottom. There's a free link to attach it. Okay. Again, I'm just trying to give you guys an overview. If you're feeling a little lost after I finish the overview, then you can start uh, asking questions of Mark and Alan and, and others. Um, Okay, so in this case, if you're doing GC uh, MS, you go to the GC autofit server, and there's two different ones, and you've been assigned to one of them. Make sure you know which one it is, so you don't um, overload the server. Um, so in this case, you're gonna um, you're gonna download your GC MS spectra first, and then you're gonna upload them to the server. So those spectra have to be taken from the um, cloud, put onto your computer. And then these have been zipped for you guys. So it just keeps it simple. Didn't want to complicate it. So that means we've put in the alkane standards, the blanks, and the sample file all into one. So those three files have been put together, and it's now in a single zip file. You're going to upload that zip file for, you, for us. And once you upload and say go, it's going to start processing. Now, it should take one or two minutes. We'll see if the smoke and fire starts coming up out of the servers or not. Um, and um, once it's done, then you can start you know, profiling. Um, and, and you're going to click at this stage. It's going to show you some of your alkane standards. Uh, as I say, you have to wait till the profiling is done. Once that profiling is completed, and you can see there's, it'll say complete. If it's not completed, it'll say profiling. You can download some of the results in a CSV file. Um, so here's an example of what the CSC file is. And so it's names of metabolites. Um, but you can also view it through the spectra viewer. This also uses J spectra view, um, but for GCMS. And so this is what the uh, annotated results will look like. Uh, so it looks a little bit like the NMR one. So there's your spectrum, but this is not an NMR spectrum. This is a GC chromatogram. And it's not where we're looking at, you know, all the peaks are integrated. That's not how uh, GCMS works. But the peaks are labeled. And then you'll see the list of the compound ID, compound name, retention index, and everything else. So you can scroll up, click again to view the spectrum. I think you can click on peaks, I hope, and it'll show you where things are. Or I'll click on the names, and it should show you the, the position of those peaks. So that's the GCMS one. It's probably the simplest of them. Um, and in terms of the server, uh, it's still probably evolving a little bit, um, but it's, a, it's in principle very similar to the, the NMR. Um, they both use a lot of similar code. Now for the last one, that's LCMS, targeted metabolomics. You've seen the slide already. This is outlining the protocol. Again, this was done for you in the, in the lab. The kits were run, uh, things were derivatized, things were processed through the LC chromatograms, through the MS. 
and now you have the data files. So those data files are, again, in this ridiculously long URL, um, but that's on the Google Drive that you can then download your file with your name on it. So these are zip files. So choose the one with your name, not someone else's name. So then you can go to the LC AutoFit server. So unlike GCMS and the NMR one, where we have to choose one of the two, this one, everyone can use the same server, I hope. Um, so to use that, um, you're gonna you know, load your file. So first download your file and it's on your computer, you're on the web server, the web server wants your file. So um, choose that file, click here, load it up. And then you're going to do something, it's going to be things you click, which is pre-process and select your quality control level. Um, that's the first thing that it does is starting of a pre-processing. It's looking at all of those QCs that were in the plate. Um, and then it's going to ask you to um, process these calibration quality control level selections. So again, it's going to, the screen pops up and you say, uh, submit. It's very small there. Uh, and then you're going to say, uh, once you've done that, then you can start profiling. So those QCs have been uploaded. You can start profiling. And just like with all the other ones, it's going to process, process, process. Um, and you may have to wait a minute. You may have to wait you know, two or three minutes. I don't know for sure, depending on the load. Um, you can see a bunch of these files being loaded up here. But for you, well, I guess you'll look for your file and wait till it's completed. Um, and as they wait, Till things are completed, don't press it while it's still saying processing. Uh, once it's completed, then you can uh, click on your uh, calibration profiling, I guess, and you'll optimize things. So this is a case where you can spend a bit of time interactively looking at you know, how are my calibration curves looking? And in most cases, they should be very linear. Um, and because you're going to be looking at uh, a few dozen different molecules, you can just quickly browse through some of those, see how things are looking. Uh, here's an example of one where it didn't work out too well. So uh, for whatever reason, um, uh, their peak drift or some erroneous retention time was entered. Uh, so then you would have to do some, a manual adjustment. So you can see that it's trying to integrate just on the left hand of the peak. Uh, but in fact, the peak is actually all of this. So this is where the program made a mistake. And so you can adjust some of those parameters to make sure that you're integrating the full set. So you can change the retention time on the left and update the max and the minimum retention time. So here the max, uh, the minimum was too low. Now you've adjusted it. Uh, and after that, you can submit and get the actual correct integration, which will give you actual or correct concentration. So these are looking at these MRM pairs, the product ion, qualifier ion, uh, parent ion, and the retention times. But to get the concentration, you have to do the integration. Um, once you've finished some of those fixes, then you just can click on your results um, and download some of those um, results files in, the, in a zip format. So uh, that's if you're exporting uh, and you'll find an LC file with your um, metabolite names and their concentrations. Again, you can open that up. Um, so this doesn't use all of JSpectra Viewer in the way that we saw with GC AutoFit and, and NMR, um, but the integration graphs and other things, I think, use elements of JSpectra Viewer. Um, so again, you'll have a Spectra Viewer and a CSV file that allows you to look at things. So once you're done, you guys will have spent roughly an hour and a half. I've given you about half an hour of, of the spiel, so you've got an hour and a half now. Uh, roughly 30 minutes each. Um, each of you will have processed a few files for GCMS, LCMS, and NMR. And then you're gonna go to drop the CBW Dropbox folder. And these are the sequence, and this is the link. So as I said, it's crowdsourced science. You're analyzing all this data sort of simultaneously. You'll have looked at by the end of this, I think, what is it, 160, 200 different samples. Um, um, and these things are going to be uploaded into three different batches, GC, LC, and MR. And that data set, or those three data sets, are the data sets that you can use tomorrow 
for metaboanalysts to do things like biomarker identification, uh, multivariate statistics, PCA, PLSTA, heat maps, whatever else you want to do. Um, but this will give you quantitative metabolomics data for three different disease conditions and three different uh, systems. So whole point here was to show that you can use targeted metabolomics methods, um, NMR, GCMS, LCMS. Um, we're not giving you a large scale study. We're not making you guys do all of the, the wet work, um, but it's, it's to give you a flavor of what it's like and what the field has evolved to. If you were doing this as a, you know, a master's or PhD thesis or to do a paper, you'd probably analyze more samples than what we're doing here. Um, and I, I think particularly for the LCMS one, there's usually a bit more um, manual work that you, is required. It's not quite perfect. Um, usually, at least with the GCMS and LCMS or the NMR, there may be a little bit of tweaking that you, you would do. But we've tried to give you example files that are you know, pretty high quality, so you're not going to get you know, spend three hours trying to figure out why this peak looks so strange. Um, but we're trying to give you a flavor. Um, so this is more like a sampling menu as opposed to a full smorgasbord. I think what I wanted to also highlight with this, because you'll have done some quantitative metabolomics now, and this may be for some of you the very first time you've done it, but to re-emphasize some of the, the, the myth-busting concepts here so that targeted metabolomics is quite a bit cheaper. It is quite a bit faster. It's quite a bit more sensitive. It tends to be more comprehensive and it can lead to significant discoveries. And all of these projects did lead to significant discoveries and you'll have a chance to have those eureka moments yourselves. It also means that because this stuff is quantitative, these things in some cases are already being translated to clinical practice or veterinary practice, as opposed to things that were untargeted where, yeah, it's a nice paper and then people just kind of put it in the dustbin and move on to another thing. This point about targeted metabolomics is to try and uh, get it to a point where it can be used in, in practical applications, that other people can replicate it, other people can do it, and so that it can be uh, applied in, in regular types of, of testing or meaningful applications. 